Rise and Shine Rwanda, it's Friday the 28th of July. Coming up on today's Rise and Shine Rwanda. The countdown continues as we prepare for the presidential elections. We'll check out the highlights from last week's Youth Connect Summit 2017. Good morning, you're watching Rise and Shine Rwanda with me, Fidelis Kangwa. Over the next half an hour, we'll bring you the latest in the world of news and business from here in Rwanda and around the world. The National Electoral Commission has announced that polling kits have arrived in nearly all the 98 polling stations outside of Rwanda. The Commission said that it would start delivery of necessary equipment and material to polling stations starting with the diaspora polling stations as they are set to cast their votes on August 3rd, a day before the citizens in the country. According to figures from the Electoral Commission, there are over 40,000 registered diaspora voters from the different countries across the world. In regional news, Kenya's officials have said that East Africa community member states are working hard to harmonize technical training in order to boost regional integration. Speaking to Xinhua in Nairobi, the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology Principal Secretary Dina Mwinzi said that currently all the six member states have different national standards that govern technical training. Therefore, partner states have agreed to prioritize development of uniform curricula, examinations, certification and accreditation of technical training institutions. She said that the harmonization will be fully operational by the year 2020 and that partner states have initiated a review of their national laws so that they conform to ESC standards. And in international news, Jack Bezos has been named the richest man in the world with a worth of $90 billion. As of Thursday morning, Jack Bezos had a net worth of $90.6 billion, putting him more than $500 million ahead of Microsoft founder Bill Gates. Amazon stock opened up at 1.6% on Thursday, adding $1.3 billion to Bezos' net worth. He is now the seventh person to hold the title of the world's richest person and the third American to top the global ranks besides Gates and Berkshire Hathaway CEO Warren Buffett. Now let's get back to our local news. With less than a week to go to the presidential elections, the question on everybody's mind is, are we ready? Well, we go down to the bottom of this mystery to review how prepared are we and what should we expect. And joining us now in studio is Liberata Iran Bona from the National Electoral Commission, uh, coordinator in charge of Kigali City. Welcome, Liberata, to Rise and Shine Rwanda. Thank you. All right, so uh, let's get straight into it. Um, August 4th, take us through a day, take us through the day. What should we expect? How many polling stations are going to be there? What time would the election start? What should people carry with them? We want to be well prepared for this day to do our job. Take us through the day. Uh, thank you very much. Um, let me begin by thanking you by inviting me here. Yes. Um, in Kigali City, first of all, we have uh, three districts. Mm -hmm. And we have um, uh, 35 sectors. 
And uh, in uh, this election, we would have um, 173 polling sites. Okay. And we would have uh, more than um, 1,656 mm -hmm. polling uh, station. And um, now, as you know, we have uh, three candidates. Yes. One from RPF. Uh, we have also a candidate from Green Party, mm -hmm. and we have also an independent candidate. They are uh, running their campaign, and the population are uh, well prepared, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. So, um, election will begin at seven mm -hmm. morning, and the people who are registered on our voter list, yes. they should bring, uh, first of all, their ID card. Mm -hmm. But uh, remember that you can lose the ID, ID card exactly. earlier morning. Mm -hmm. So there you can go to the authority at sector level or cell level, and uh, the EES of sectors or cells, they can provide some paper. Mm -hmm. And that you can based on that, and then you can vote. Okay. They should also bring um, their voter card. And uh, at seven, they are there. Our polling staff, uh, the coordinator of polling site, mm -hmm. uh, begin by explaining how people should vote, and then after that, uh, they come and they enter in the polling uh, station. They will provide the voter ballot paper, and then they go in the uh, booth, and then they select mm -hmm. among the three candidates. All right. Yeah. So um, we've heard it in the international media at least, and this is something we talked about um, last week as well. They mm -hmm. keep saying there's a climate of fear in mm -hmm. Rwanda. What do you have to say about that when it comes to the elections? What do you have to say about that, especially in regards to Kigali? Mm -hmm. um, would, you, would you say that people feel comfortable? Do they feel um, secure? Um, on that day, are, are there any certain measures that you've taken to ensure the security of the people coming for the election? I can say that they are secured. Okay. For example, today I was uh, with the independent candidate, mm -hmm. Mr. Philippe Maimana, and uh, in the Kichikira district, uh, Masaka sector, and the population was asking him, uh, you are going to... You are going to provide the water and we have water, that's to say something new. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, this can show you that the population, they don't have fear about mm -hmm. this election. If they can ask some question to the candidate mm -hmm. and the candidate respond, there's no fear on that. Yeah. You feel Maybe those who say that, <laughs> they are not in, in Rwanda. Yes, huh? they're not. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they're not. Yeah. Oh. They should come and see. What, what you have planned. Yes. All right. Yeah. So um, the other thing would be, again, um, I'm sorry to just bring up the controversial questions, but um, there's also um, a saying that goes that sometimes during the election, people are forced to vote for a certain person. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that um, conspiracy or theory that they've set out there, which um, people think is the truth? I think for me, first, if you enter in the polling station mm -hmm. and they, they provide a ballot paper, yes. you're going to look and you're alone. Mm -hmm. So nobody can force you. As you are alone, you are there, you sit at the, you make your choice. Either you use a stamp or you use the pen. So for me, there's no force on that. All right. Yeah. All right. Are there any um, special um, treatments that have, or arrangements that have been made for, let's say, the elderly or the sick? Um, because, I, as you know, most of the Rwandan people are excited to cast their vote and pick their next president, which means we'll still have huge numbers of elderly people. Um, people are not necessarily feeling well. Are there measures that you've taken to ensure that these people can also vote comfortably? Of course, because in our... Um 
rule and the regulation governing this election, uh, we have some articles regarding on those uh, sick people or mm -hmm. those uh, elders. They are a priority. Mm -hmm. They come on the voter uh, site and they are going to vote before other population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even some Rwandese, they are committed to help the elders. Yes. If I have a car, and my neighbor is an elder woman or a man, why not to help her or, mm -hmm. or him to reach the polling site and vote mm -hmm. before others and then return at home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, have you been putting it out there in the media so people know this information? Uh, would you say that the Rwandan community are well informed on what their role is during these elections? Yes, of course. Uh, now I'm here. Yes, now and I'm the here. other day I was uh, on the other radio and our EAs, even our commissioners, they yes. passed through different media and the population are uh, aware on this election. Mm -hmm. And we have also passed through Umuganda. Uh, during the, uh, after Umuganda, we explained to the population how to vote, you know. And we have also training some students from different universities in Kigali City mm -hmm. and around the country. Mm -hmm. And those young people help a lot to reach population in their respective homes, yes. to train, to give more information about this election. And not only that, we have also used uh, our website. We put our code of conduct, we put our electoral code, even the rule and regulation governing this election. So those who cannot attend the meeting, mm -hmm. but can uh, have access to internet, so they can also read. You know. Yes. yes yeah. um, uh, I'm a youth, so I know how we can get sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. But what, would you ha what do you have to say to the youth who are watching our show and most of them don't feel the necessity or the, their role, mm -hmm. uh, they don't get, don't take their role as that much important when it comes to, to election. Work. It's very easy for them to come in August, but to sleep in until noon or until yeah. two, in the, two in the afternoon and then and decide to go home at that time. Exactly, exactly. Days, exactly. You know? And take it as a public a day for them to relax. What do you have to say to that person who's watching a show and who was probably considering to do that on that day? I can say our young people are not a civic like that. Yes. Yeah, because if you follow the campaign now, mm -hmm. they are after those uh, candidates. So, which means that they have interest on this. Uh, you can you can see their election. commitment. Yeah. Yes, and not only that, you know, for example, uh, the young lady or the young uh, man who has maybe twenty years now. Uh, he may be having maybe 14 or 15 years to live. Yes. So more better to go this election, to elect, and then to prepare in the future. Secure your yes, future. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I would really encourage them to participate in this election. Mm -hmm. Not to stay at home, sleep, or take occasion to go around to drink or to dance. Of course they can do that, but before that, in the morning, mm -hmm. They should go to the make sure polling station, attend. make sure they make their choice, they vote, and then after that they can return to their profession. Yes. Yeah. So elections are in most cases attributed to a high cost. Um, it's often it's maybe in other countries or sometimes other countries that right after the election mm -hmm. you can see that the economy goes down. This mm -hmm. money is not there. Mm -hmm. What have you done as Kigali City to ensure that things will remain stable now during the elections and even after the elections, especially what part are you playing to ensure that um, you do not affect the economy to that to an extent where people will feel a bit you know, deprived of, uh, of certain things? Mm -hmm. First of all, we, in Rwanda, uh, we use just one, uh, $1.5 dollars. Yes by one people came to, to vote. And if you consider with other different countries, they use uh, $4 or even $7. Mm -hmm. 
So in our country, we use to keep our electro material. For example, in Kigali City, we have our warehouse in the South District mm -hmm. at uh, Sector Nero. Mm -hmm. And we're able to use the, the material we have been using since the 2003. Yes. Uh, and this show you how we keep our, our money. And uh, not only that, we have our um, electro volunteers. Mm -hmm. They are working without asking any money, which is different, totally different to other countries. Okay. Yeah. If you run election, you are paid. But in our country, it's not like that. Okay. Uh, Rwandan are committed to serve their country, even uh, during election, without asking money. Mm -hmm. And uh, remember that when we prepare our polling station and polling uh, site, we use our local materials. So this shows you how we keep living. We, we are cut the sand costs, on our yeah. economy. All right, yeah. all right. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I hope everybody feels as informed as I am at the moment. Uh, yeah. We really appreciate you coming to the show and look forward to having you again very soon. Um, if we get, when we get our questions in through our social media, I'll be sure to reach out to you for your help. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and you are uh, always welcome. Yes. Why not to visit our office? Definitely, in definitely. Kigali City Hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you have, have any my questions. number. Perfect. If you have any questions. You are almost welcome. All right, thank you very much, yeah. Roberta. Thank you. All right, more still to come. You're watching Rise and Shine Rwanda. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Rise and Shine Rwanda. Held just last week, from the 19th to the 21st of July 2017, the Youth Connect Summit uh, focused on establishing three guidelines for African states, uh, which are policy, programs, and partnerships. Hosted by His Excellency President Paul Kagame, the inaugural Youth Connect Summit brought together government officials and special guests that include Jack Ma, founder and ex executive chairman of Alibaba Group, and Dr. Muhisa Kitai, Secretary General, of the UN CTAD to mention but a few. Here's a recap from our review. The Youth Connect Summit brought together more than 2,500 guests that include top executives from multinational companies, government officials, and youths of all ages from all across the continent. Among the main speakers were Mr. Jack Ma, the executive chairman and founder of Alibaba Group, singer-songwriter, Aluame Damala Bagdara Akan, as well as His Excellency Mr. Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, who reflected on the great role that integration plays in the development of African countries. You can't have uh, young Africans dying on their way to other places, fleeing their own homes, their countries, and not imagine that something terrible must be going wrong in our own countries. Therefore, one, there are a number of things. For example, I referred to even the question of visa. Well, you know, we should even learn that denying people visa is not uh, a very clever thing, because people will still go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they'll go places, they'll go wherever they want, but... And, and that adds to the very problem of Africa's integration. Why, how do we, on one hand, talk about integration, at the same time, we deny people to move freely from one place to another. How, how does it work? It just doesn't make sense. But it's not just that. It's also business. People can't do business across borders. They can't trade. And that also means uh, people will not invest. We would we won't be able to invest in one another 
enough. We should be doing trade with each other. We should be investing in and with each other. We should be having free movement of people and whatever they produce. So, to begin with, we must address this problem. Grant's richest person in Asia and 14th richest person on Earth, Mr. Jack Ma announced four projects that include him inviting 200 African young entrepreneurs to work at Alibaba headquarters, pledging to work with universities in Africa and governments to train specific courses including internet and artificial intelligence and more, promoting and supporting environmental conservation efforts, and lastly, he plans to invest 10 million US dollars worth in funds in African youth. Most importantly, he encourages the youth not to wait too long before starting to work on their dreams. You should never think that the e-commerce of Africa will be as powerful, as sophisticated as China next year. But if you start to do now, it took me 18 years from China to build up nothing to now 18 years. I think it takes you probably five to eight years. It has great potential. I just start do it now, and I think the future of e-commerce in Africa is much bigger, much bigger than Europe and America. Jack Ma tells us, work hard every day. It may be dark, still keep working. We hear from Dr. Muhisa Kitui that you are the hope for this continent. Akon says, work hard and give knowing that you will be accountable to your maker one day. What will he say to you? And President Kagama says, the hope is in all of you and don't accept to be less than what you actually can be. It's been amazing. Thank you all so much. What an incredible forum. Can we and can we all stand up and and joining us now in studio is Ted Kaviruka, who is an economic analyst here in Rwanda. Welcome, Ted, to the show. Thank you so much. So um, the Youth Summit happened last week, um, attracted a huge crowd of, of people, um, you know, officials, government officials, um, investors, you, you know, local youths. Um, but my first question um, concerning the Youth Connect would be, We've, we've heard a lot of good policies that came up during the, the Youth Connect. A lot of good decisions were made. A lot of plans were made. But I am looking at this from the point of view of somebody in the rural parts of Rwanda. And I have an idea, I have a business too. But I'm not the kind of person who attended the Youth Connect maybe because of the opportunities that were not presented to me or I was not capable to attend. Um, would you say that some of these decisions that were made during the Youth Connect will necessarily impact the people in rural parts of the country who are not as exposed to these opportunities as the people here in Kigali? Uh, I would say uh, in the early stage, no. Yeah. But if you look at it in the long run, uh, the people who are located in rural area will be also impacted. Uh, simply remember, because remember they have a 2020 plan that yes, by yes. 2020, 25 million opportunities would have been created yes. and they're hoping to have filled them. So by 2020, we have three years. Yep. So how well, is this long uh, run? Well, I, well, I said long run, yeah. uh, not to say uh, the day after yes. uh, the, <laughs> the summit. Yes. But the thing is, uh, one after the summit uh, decision are taken, recommendation are taken, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the act has put in place framework yeah. to implement the decision. And those frameworks should be uh, at the same time uh, conducive or accessible for people who are urban located, but mm -hmm. also uh, rural area. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, rural area, they have their own uh, issues related to access to information, related to uh, uh, access to the broader range of services, yes. uh, internet, uh, electricity, road, you know, those kind of uh, limitations which uh, limit their access to information. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it in a broader perspective, mm -hmm. and especially in Rwanda, where mm -hmm. uh, the country is uh, more or less accessible, more than other African countries, I mean. Sure. Uh, we can say rural area uh, in Rwanda is more accessible than anywhere in Africa. Yeah. And uh, if you see, by combining the uh, phone penetration in Rwanda, uh, 
I'm very optimistic that uh, something will happen in rural area mm -hmm. more than in other African countries. And, and considering as well the fact that uh, our governing boards are very um, driven and, and they, they normally make sure that these um, solutions reach these people in the rural parts of the country, yeah? Yes, actually uh, that's the, the benefit of, uh, of uh, the technology, yes. the digital world, yes. where uh, 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 physical proximity is no longer an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, what matters is the idea and how do you uh, channel the idea through existing framework. Mm -hmm. And I think with the internet penetration in Rwanda, chances are very high for, for rural areas in Rwanda to yeah. benefit as well. Yeah. Now, during the Youth Connect, uh, there was a lot of talk on integration and, you know, very many um, speakers were talking about it and they were really encouraging people um, and different governments to really initiate this uh, integration, be it economically, politically, in all aspects. Yes. Um, but as a Rwandan youth, um, if, to be honest, some of them are worried and saying, what does this mean for us? Because um, the youth that we've seen in other countries, let's say Kenya and Uganda, can be very competitive. What does this mean for the opportunities that are presented for us here that we feel like after this integration has been done, um, could easily slip out of our, our hands? And what can be done again to encourage the youth here in Rwanda to be more competitive, feel confident about um, their, their ideas and you know, be, be even more driven to push them forward to, to develop them? Well, uh, integration is, is an opportunity itself, yes. but it comes with its challenge as well. Yeah. So, uh, especially for, a, a, I would say, a young market mm -hmm. where uh, the players were not exposed to that uh, uh, tough competition. And um, let's, let's agree that uh, the youth in Rwanda has been thinking that classical way of someone going to school after graduation and then you get a job, yes, a paying job. Pretty much. That was <laughs> you know, the, the, the philosophy. Yes. And I think now the, the, the mentality is shifting and mm -hmm. the opportunity are no longer available for, for, for being employed. Mm -hmm. So if we are shifting now, uh, uh, youth opportunities are becoming uh, uh, smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. then the youth are, are now confronting the, 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 the new opportunities, how do you create, create your own job yes. using the existing opportunities. And I wouldn't say uh, the, the youth from other countries will uh, overshadow Rwanda and youth. Yes. No. no. Well, it's, it's to be pessimistic mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, the Rwandan youth have new challenge mm -hmm. for which they have to step back and strategize. Yeah. How do you play in the new era where you are competing with others? So don't look at this as a, as a negative thing. Instead, you know, maximize on it. Yeah. You yeah. see, competition brings opportunity. Yes. More than you can be alone at doing your own thing and get gaining. Mm -hmm. When you get competitors, you you like stimulated to work more and harder mm -hmm. than you used to do when mm -hmm. you were alone. So yeah. that's how I perceive. And the good thing is uh, uh, um, youth in Rwanda are backed up by the government. Government is there to support them. Mm -hmm. Government is there to encourage them. Every single day there is a good speech saying, you can do it. Yes. So people trust the youth. Yes. If we trust the youth, youth can trust themselves as well. Yes. yes. Now, um, because of the fact that there's a scarcity of job opportunities at the moment, especially in Rwanda, I'm a youth. I know what most of well, my friends, my colleagues go through when trying to apply for jobs. It is very, very difficult. Um, which is why, again, they're encouraged to become self-employed, you know, start their own businesses. But again, what does this mean for um, these jobs that at right the moment are very competitive to get, but then now when all these youths are focusing on becoming business people, um, what does this mean for these other jobs where, because at the moment the people who have them are, def are of an older generation, eventually they'll have to step out. What does this mean for the economy as well? Um, where do you see that going um, as well? Because again, I, I, we appreciate and we, we, we like the fact that they have been encouraged to be self-employed, but is there something being done to ensure that um, there's also another part that's being encouraged to take on these, um, let's say, government jobs? Well, uh, 
let's agree that uh, everyone is not made to be business person. True. That's, <laughs> it's a natural selection. But, but what you've been hearing all week that you can do it. You know, there's, there's, <laughs> well, that's, there's that encouragement. You no, feel like, no, no I can't give no, up I now. I think the spirit is to say anything you can go in, be yes. it employed or, yes. or self-employed, yes. you can do it. That's the philosophy. True. But the truth is, uh, even if opportunity of self-employment will be 100%. Mm -hmm. Everyone is not made to be a business person. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship, it, it's, I would say it's a gift. It's true. So for those who are gifted to be entrepreneurs, then we need to support them as, 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 as uh, the country mm -hmm. to be more successful. Mm -hmm. And then they can employ their fellow youth mm -hmm. who are not entrepreneurs they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, no matter how they the support can be, everyone can't be mm -hmm. that successful. Mm -hmm. Even those, this, that small number of, of people who are not interested yeah. to be a risk taker, you know, remember business goes with the risk taking. True. Actually, from the pool of 100 people, 20% are risk taker. Eight, you know, around 60% are risk averse. Yes. And then others are risk neutral. Mm -hmm. So that's percentage of people who are risk averse will be working for those risk takers. Mm -hmm. And that's how the, 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 the natural selection made people to be complementary. Mm -hmm. Because those who are entrepreneurs, anyway, the day they will be successful, they will need to employ other, right? Mm -hmm. So the 60% of the people who are risk are averse. Are covered in that uh, yes. section, sure. Yeah. Um, now, uh, the policies that were set are during the Youth Connect uh, compared to previous Youth Connect summits that had happened previously um, on just a random level, uh, would you say they're realistic? Would you say they're achievable? Because uh, it would be unfortunate if some of the good things that we heard died out like, after a month or two, because it does happen sometimes. Yeah. And, 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 you know, how, how would we, basically how would we measure the success of the Youth Connect from the previous years? And how realistic are the goals that we've set for ourselves going forward since this is the Youth Connect that happened uh, last week? Well, le le let me start on, on even the organization and the, the participant and the people who were on the panel, different panels. Mm -hmm. uh, there were these uh, kind of people who tried mm -hmm. and succeeded. Mm -hmm. That itself brings inspiration to the youth. Uh, they were not talking uh, like uh, stories. No, they were not stories. Like, I did this, I tried this, I failed here, but after this, I succeeded. Mm -hmm. So that combination of uh, uh, trial and success was uh, a, a, a testimony for, for, for success. Yes. Uh, back to your question then, uh, I think this, uh, the, the last uh, youth summit was more uh, close to reality. Sure. What can we do? Mm -hmm. And what do we need? You know? They said we need ex we need funds we need a framework we need a follow up you know they were more practical than uh, those rhetoric yes. meeting we are used to yes. see in different forums. Yes. So and then, and what does it mean for the economy? Let's say this this have been successful. Where do we see Rwanda come twenty twenty? Because remember this is the target that we have. I think uh, whoever as an economist evolve, especially whoever evolves <laughs> need to hit the ground yes. and start immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, support the youth. Money is now in the pipeline, yeah. so it should not be any more a, a, a hindrance to to support youth uh, business ideas. Youth should get uh, a guarantee fund. Should mm -hmm. get finance for their their businesses. Uh, if I, I'm, I'm I'm optimistic on on the. Uh, progress, I would say uh, I expect to see in the near future uh, something like 100 projects of youth being implemented. Yes. And then we can see how it, it grows uh, over time. Perfect. You heard it here first from Ted. If you want your business to be a successful start now, don't wait. We have yes. only three years to go yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ted, for your time. Really yeah. appreciate it and look forward to having you again here on Rise and Shine Randa. Thank you so much. All right. You're watching Rise and Shine Randa. We'll be right back after the break. Now, don't forget to love to hear your thoughts, comments, and feedback on what we're talking about here on Rise and Shine Rwanda. Tweet us at Rise and Shine RW. Like us on Facebook and send us your ideas for programs. 
Check out our Rise and Shine Wonder YouTube page where you can catch all the shows and reports that we do. Find us on Instagram, Rise and Shine our that we love to see your pictures. Or check out our Rise and Shine Wonder website. Well, that's all the time that we have for you today, but do let us know if you have any ideas for the program. You've been watching Rise and Shine Wanda with me, Fidelis Karangwa. We're we'll back here same time, same place next week to join us then. But for now, from me and the rest of the Rise and Shine Wanda team, have a very good day. Goodbye.